What's up, y'all? This is Lost in Seattle. And uh, we finally catching up on this Hassan Campbell, uh, Kwame Brown situation. I'm oh, sorry, Kwame. Kwame. Brown. Kwame. I'm sorry, Stephen A. Smith brainwashed me the last uh, 20 years. But <laughs> Kwame Brown and Hassan, uh, Hassan was on his uh, podcast. And over all the other stuff that with the back and forth they had, you know, the that's normal, yeah, normal YouTube stuff. And, you know, Kwame, you know, you say his name, he going to appear. Just like uh, what what's the name of that movie? Candyman. Candyman. Say his name. He gon' he gonna show up. <laughs> you don't gotta say his name three times. Y'all, no, you gotta do one. five. Well, Candy. no, he said he said that uh, he said his name more than once, or at least referenced him mul- multiple times, four or five times. You get to say the fifth one, and he finally you know addressed the situation. But Kwame is the Candyman. <laughs> yeah, people. When he invited him on the show, people was like, "This nigga scared." <laughs> somebody this nigga scared. Yeah, this nigga scared. But, <laughs> but the main part we want to talk about with this <laughs> is the difference in the the very noticeable difference in our community that we have, where we have too many OGs and not enough elders. Shout out to Chronicles of Judah. Chronicles of Judah. Did and a video breakdown on that. And this is a perfect like it shows it beautifully. The mindset that Kwame has. He's an elder. Because he even though he's only 38, 39, he's not he's not an elder, but he's around them. So he has a certain energy, energy. with him that he carries. Versus Hassan Campbell, who's 44, he grew he made different decisions in his life. And so he has the energy of an OG. I, a gangster. Let's go back to the movie, um Don't it's the Menace of Society. Yeah, don't yeah, Menace of Society, yeah. Where an OG can teach you how to be in the hood, hood or what not to do yeah when you look at an og in the hood can only show you what he knows and what does an og know all he knows is the streets or what, what we would call a reformed og all he can tell you is what not to do based off what he did exactly an elder can tell you what you should do an og can tell you what block not to go on what colors not to wear what set you repping what this mean, what that means as far as the gang life and the street life, the street rules, the code. But he can't tell you about life outside the hood. How many of y'all know a, know an older man in your neighborhood who has never left that neighborhood? Or that block. Or that block. Or that city. Uh, there's people who there's people that we call elders in our neighborhood that have never left the state, let alone the country. And I'm not one of those people that say you need a passport to experience things so that you can know things. I believe the best people, the wisest people can learn from other people's experience. But the fact that you've never even left your city, what can you really teach me about the world? Yeah. But this, we're going to show some clips from this uh, podcast. But that's not to had. say that's Hassan, totally. Well, no, yeah, let me make sure I make that. I'm yeah. not saying it's Hassan. I'm not saying he's, I do not dislike Hassan. I will subscribe no. to him. Hassan has some truth in what he, he speaks. But my point is the mindset. He cannot help the circumstances that he's in. The mind he has at 44 is not changing. He has the mind of an OG. That doesn't mean it's a bad thing necessarily. It's just it's just a difference in our community. Have We have so many OGs and not enough elders. But let me just go ahead and play it. You tell me. You have the floor, sir. I never said your name. Why are you speaking about me as if you know me? I spoke about you because you spoke about me. When you mentioned my name, I mentioned you. When, when I set up it, when, when I made when I made the video, and I said, "Don't compare me to an NBA player." When did, no I, when, did I, when, when did I mention your name? You wasn't talking about me earlier when you took the shot, sir. You said Michael. I looked up to Michael Jordan. I was abused. You said something that, about listen, me. Listen, listen, listen. That was that was sarcasm. Matter of fact. What I'm sir, but that, that wasn't about me. Let's be honest. Listen, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That wasn't about me. Let's listen. Let's let's nip this in the bud. As a man, I'm gonna apologize as a man because the reality of it is, you didn't do nothing to me. Now, see, this is the part where I mean, where being an OG isn't always a bad thing. An OG can be a man as well. An OG can have traits that make him a man. A man. Yeah. He can have ethics and morals and principles matter of fact some of the gangsters dudes you know probably have stronger principles than the average joe the problem is some of those principles can be very negative for the community for instance you know you hear people say who's in the street say stuff like you know uh if, if you if you're a part of the game you know anything can happen if you're not in the game you're untouchable yeah so that means if you're a person who's not in the street life you don't deal with drugs and that game banking then they're not gonna touch you 
But if you are, you, hey, it is what it is. Well, that means that a 14-year-old can get touched. If you're 15, you selling drugs, you can get shot. Yeah. So that's principles, but once again, it negatively affects the community. So when I say that, OG versus elder, it doesn't, that's like I said, it's just a mindset on how you view things. It doesn't mean you're less of a man and you're less principled and stuff. That's what I mean. So to cut all the bullshit, as a man, you didn't do nothing to me. I stepped on your toes. I respect some of the things. First of all, let me say this, right? When I first started hearing about you, automatically, the first thing I said was boule. I didn't do my homework. My homework. I didn't look to see whether you was on um, a credible dude, what your fight was. Later on, I started. I seen on um, the Judge Joe Brown joint, which I thought was dope, or whatever the case may be. But just to give you who I am, when it comes to anybody that comes from Hollywood, uh, the music industry, any any of that, I look at everybody sideways. No, I do too. <laughs> I do as well. Uh, when Kwame first came on the scene, it was it was a lot of side eye because it's just like There's, they letting this dude talk like this. Yeah, so I, I can't disagree and with it. Sign still right is there. some side eyed. Uh, I side eye anybody. I don't look. I, I just because I don't um, dislike someone doesn't mean I don't always have you under a certain surveillance. level of surveillance. Like I'm keep my eye on you. I I love the things he do and say, but once he, we don't know none of these people. None of they're them. on YouTube. We do not know them. We don't we can know agree. Kwame. Yeah, we don't know him. We know we we can agree with their message. We can agree with some of the things they say, but we don't know them. That's what comes. What's what turns into idol worship? You don't know nobody until you meet them. So I prejudged you according to that. But as far as who you are and what you're doing right now, your message, some of the things that I've caught up on and I listen to, I respect your message as a man. So, but sir, you didn't say that about 30, 40 minutes ago. What I said was not set for 30 40 minutes ago what i said was a response to the indirect that what you said about me on earlier today but listen bro you've said something about me indirectly in three maybe four even when you spoke about me the first time when somebody asked you what do you think about kwame brown you said i like him but and then you went on to talk about all this stuff and even today you talked about an oath and I'm telling you that anytime you go to prison, you sign an oath. You sign an oath to be a slave for white boys. And that mentality that you're preaching and you going back to the hood as a married man with jewelry and chains on, are you prepared to kill someone? Because that's what you would have to do to be in the hood by yourself. So to speak the way that you're speaking, how old are you, sir? 44. You're 44 years old with children beautiful children may i add Thank and you. i've seen you put them on the internet you have a wife you have a beautiful yard with flowers and dogs which you should <laughs> be enjoying but you steady going back to the hood to prove what what you would have to do to protect those chains and to protect the thing to brag about being in the hood if somebody approached you you would have to kill that person now, see, this is where we talk about the elder wisdom. Like I said, we know Kwame is only 38, 39, but this is elder wisdom. When One of those things where you see Hassan, like I said, I have no dislike for him. I don't dislike him. He's flashy. He, you know, like a lot of dudes who got it, you know, black people, <laughs> we, black people can be, you know, braggadocious. They can be flashy. They can be, you know, but it's one of those situations where he's 44 and he, he has all these things that he said with me. He has wisdom. Once again, he has wisdom, but he's an OG with wisdom. So even though he's 44 with a wife and kids and a lawn and flowers and lives in the suburbs. White picket fence. He just he just decides that in order to prove that he's from that environment. And he's allowed to be in that environment. He, he goes back living it. He has to go back and keep reliving it. Once again, we're not trying to attack him. We're just making a, it's like a case study. At this yeah. point, making a point. And he doesn't realize that when he goes to the hood and he wears all that flashy stuff, he is putting himself in danger and the, he also is putting the people that are in that environment in danger because they um, I mean, they are still in poverty. He has left poverty. It's, and that's not us defending people, robbing people, but we're talking about people that are, what's the word I want to use? They're in need. <laughs> so when, you, when they're living in poverty and they're clearly into the streets, 
and you come to the hood with your jewelry on, you know, and your expensive clothes and, you know, your nice car. What's the first thing going to say? Certain people going to say, you fool. Or they say, oh, he think he all that. He think he all that. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get that. I'm going to get that watch. I'm going to get that chain. I'm going to see, I'm gonna see, what, I'm gonna see if he can protect what he got. And so, uh, like I said, we're not justifying it happening. We're talking about reality. Well, it, it, no, we're talking about common sense. Yeah, you're right. It, it's common sense. Reality. You know what's going to happen. So instead, you go to the hood with your gun. We saw the video of him with his gun. And you putting yourself in danger, your family in danger, and you're, put, you're, put, you're creating a scenario where the people who maybe wanted to rob you even have that option. You can't give people who want to hurt you an option to hurt you. Stay away from them. You don't have to live. Look, you know, we have the situation in the hood where when people become wealthy or successful and they leave, they get demonized. Oh, you left the hood. Well, if you're going to stay in the hood, <laughs> you need to be smart about it. Don't live outside the hood, but keep coming back. Either be there and have a certain group around you to protect you. Because if you want to help the hood, you want to live around the people and you know, maybe you want to open up a, uh, a business or something to help the community. That's one thing. But when you live outside the hood and you just coming back and leaving and coming back and leaving, what are you coming back for? You got family here. Okay. They can come see you. That's not being mean to your, to the hood. That's not neglecting the hood. The hood don't love nobody. And when I say the hood, I mean the streets, the streets don't love you. Once again, this is the OG mentality or hurt that person. Is that correct? I don't see your point. The point is, why would you put yourself at risk when you have a family to brag like that about being in the hood? If somebody saw you on live and ran up on you and you do something to them, you will be going to prison, leaving your wife and your children. Why would you go to the hood when you got nice flowers like that? And a First fish of all, for one, I live in the hood. <laughs> for two, I have family in the hood. For three, God made this earth spacious enough for me to travel through wherever I des decide to go. So whether you have jewelry on or you just traveling and you have a glow to you as a person, but I, when, sometimes when I travel, just like when you travel, some people may recognize you, they may not. I'm not going to stop going to the hood based off of what somebody feel about me. That's not going to happen. You see, this is the OG. <laughs> he thinks he's been a punk. If he decides not to go back to the hood at the risk of being robbed. You know how many, we saw killed. this on a, um, this was on a Facebook live. There was a, there was a, a dude who left Chicago because his life was in danger. Yep. Went back to Chicago on Facebook live and got killed. And a person saw that he was on Facebook live, went to him and killed him and killed him. <laughs> when you could have just stayed not, away, just don't, you knew that they was going to get you when you came back there, but you the could not stay out of that hood the og mentality the street dude mentality turns into the og mentality you think if i don't go back they're gonna say i'm a punk it's like how about be alive how about not having to do something where you end up in prison there's nothing wrong <laughs> with staying away from danger oh. don't put yourself <laughs> they like to run to it yeah you don't have to run to danger to be a man a wise man know to get into a, as little conflict as possible in his life and that's a, that's a healthy life for a man. You know, as a man, you build. <laughs> you don't destroy. You don't look to destroy someone else. You look to build yourself up and possibly build someone else. Mm -hmm. When you know there's danger somewhere, you make a decision to stay away from it. Hell, you could take it the way Floyd Mayweather boxes. Yeah, the defensive. Constantly. Defensive. Always protect yourself. Always but protect yourself. That's for one. For two, I don't have a point to prove to anybody, but at the same time, I'm going to defend myself if I have to. But, the, I mean, the reality of it is this conversation shouldn't really be based on whether I'm going back to the hood or not. But the, the it's, the, it's the, way that you, the, oh, the, that's the way that you're going to the hood, though. You're the going to the hood with chains on. The you're going to the hood saying, yeah, I, I, I can go to my hood. I can do this. I can do that. That's braggadocious. Let me explain and, something. And you right? would have to you would have to hurt the person that come up to you in the hood. You you a real street cat, right? So you know there's rules and regulation to the hood. You don't make yourself look like food in the hood. I can't be in a blood neighborhood wearing blue. There's rules and regulations to the street, and you going back to your hood while you're a grown ass man with children 
And if you were in the hood with that many flowers, that's a nice ass hood. With that fish tank and that nice stuff you got, if that's the hood, you were no, in that's, nice not the hood. Hood. Okay, that's not so, the hood. That's not the hood. See, he yeah. said he lived in the hood. Now he's saying that's not the hood. Now, another point he made right here where he said, well, the point I want to make is it's almost like this is an elder mindset that Kwame is saying. He said there's possibility of danger. You know, you know how perfect example they tell you when you drive a car that you're not just you don't have to just protect yourself. You have to protect everyone around you. Yeah. So as a wise man and, you, you know, I don't go to a crip neighborhood with red on, not because I'm scared, but because it's common sense. I know some dumbass gonna see me with red on in his hood, even and though I'm not a gang member, and they're gonna approach me, and now we're gonna get into a confrontation. So I'm not just protecting myself, because if I got protection on me, I might have to do something to him. That means I'm also protecting him. So when you're wise, an elder mindset tells you to not just protect yourself, but people around you. Same thing as when you're driving a car. You don't just protect yourself. You protect all the drivers. You're aware of everything. You don't go to the hood with the wrong colors on or too much jewelry on because you're protecting not just yourself, but everyone. I'm talking about where your family is. That's where you should stay. Because what you would have to do in order to brag like that with chains on, you would have to hurt someone, which would take you Hold away up. from your family. Hold up for a second. Give me, give me. I'm trying to figure out so you basically talking to me about me going to the hood with chains on. I think that you you, you way too articulate as a, as a man. You're way too smart as a man to be talking about whether I'm going. Our conversation shouldn't be based off of whether I'm going back to the hood with chains on. That's I, not I, what I don't, I don't get that. That's okay. Let me explain. And like I'm, I said, as a man, hold on, I apologize hold on, to you. I apologize look, look, to look you at as that a man. I understand the apology, but look, hold your wrist up. Hold your wrist up. That right there makes you a target in the hood. And what you, you know what say, makes me hold up. You know what makes up, me a what target in the hood? Also makes hold, you a hold target. Up, hold up. You know what makes me a target in the hood? Because I, I hear you breaking down like I'm glorified going to jail. But do you realize that I got beef with a, with every major rapper because I talk about the poison that they spew out from speakers? Do you realize when I when I go down to Harlem, I got beef with Damn near everybody down there. Damn near every every gang I speak out against every gang. How you say gang gang? I speak out against all that shit. All of that. Everything that's going on in the hood with all these young boys killing each other. These parents sitting up in the in, in the park drinking Hennessy while their kids are shooting up the block. I've been speaking about all that. So my whole thing is me personally, like I said, if your message, which I respect the fact that you got in Charlemagne's ass. I respect it. I don't rock with that man. I don't rock with nobody that take p p pussy. Nobody. But at the end of the day, I stirred this pot up. So as a man, I could apologize and say, you know what? I came at the brother first. Like I said, no, you can have wisdom as well. He can speak against the rappers and he knows, he knows how the, some of that hip hop might've influenced him. Yeah. He knows how, see, once again, the hip, the OG can tell you what, he went through and can tell you how not to do what he did. He can't tell you what you should do because he didn't do it. That's the point. He's an OG. An OG can have a lot of wisdom that can get you out of a lot of nasty situations in the streets because they understand how to maneuver it correctly. But he can never tell you what to do outside of the streets. That's the point. Because I was raised. But my whole thing is like, I mean, if we're going to build I'm not really building about whether I'm going to be in the hood with jewelry because I'm going to be in the hood with the ju with jewelry. <laughs> and he won't let it go. He won't let it go. He, he said, I'm going to be in the hood Once again, with he thinks if he walks around the hood without jewelry, he punking. He getting punked. I ain't or scared. he won't be noticed. It, part of that too. I, I'm not scared. That's the old, I'm not I'm not scared. I'm a man. Somebody, If it happens, it happens. If I have to do something, I got to do something. Instead of being wise enough to not even create the situation. He's because an OG. He's not an elder. Without that jury on, he won't be noticed. He'll just be like everybody else. Exactly. He feel invisible. He won't be. <laughs> but that's attention seeking that he's after. Which goes back into, you know, a lot of street people, you know, we say they have feminine tendencies. It is what it is. A lot of the stuff you see in the streets is over, overly emotional. They react so quickly to things emotionally. So he, he reacting right now. He's like, you know, if, if I'm in the hood, I'm going to wear my jewelry. I don't care. 
and and who you hear say that <laughs> and and so he's like i'm gonna stand i'm gonna go to the hood with my jewelry on and if i got to i'm gonna shoot somebody instead of saying maybe i don't need this many chains maybe i just need one watch enough i mean how do you think those people feel when you go into the hood you have on all that uh jewelry on and they're living in poverty well it, it creates a, a level of envy jealousy. and jealousy definitely but I, well, once again, I'm not trying to defend the people to uh, say it's okay for them to rob people. It's just, that's just reality. That's how things go. When you got people in the city, we're not talking about the average person in the hood. We know the average person in the hood is not committing no crimes. The average person in the hood going to work, you know, collecting their check and just, you know, getting by. That's just what they're doing. You got a small percentage of people in the hood who are predators. So when they see him, he he's the prey, prey or he got to be a predator himself. Once again, it's the OG mindset. Okay. Well, so I feel like that's what I'm saying. Let's just found on that though. You, right. you is it not true that if somebody run up on you by yourself with jury on, what would you have to do to that person? So if somebody ran up to me, if somebody, yeah. if somebody ran up to me while I got my jury on and they tried to take my jury, it's gonna be an all out war. OG. He's an OG, people. So why put yourself in that situation at 44 with flowers, a fish tank, kids, and a wife? Why well, put myself in that situation? Yes, sir. Do you ask them, 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 uh, them rappers why they put themselves in that situation? Deflection. What about ism? What did it have to do with you? He just asked you, though. <laughs> well, but the rappers go back to the hood. They have security. Exactly. Most of them. That was least. a dumb comeback. But the point of the matter is, what does it got to do with you? He he told you why you put yourself in the situation. The first thing you do is, what about so and so? Well, he trying to think of how to answer this question, so he let Kwame yeah, talk yeah. while he develop his thoughts, get yeah. his thoughts together. Yes, sir, I did. I said that earlier today. I said some of these rappers, a lot of these rappers, should not even have friends because all they do is get the people around them killed by their mouth and get the people around them arrested because they talk tough and they get kids from these neighborhoods like me and you are from that don't know trades and don't know skills, but they know how to harm people and they don't know the results of uh, and the consequences of what happens. 15, 16 years old, these boys are killers and they're doing it at the direction of bad OGs. There you go. There you go. Or we can end it right there. <laughs> we can end it right there. Cause the, but it's not necessarily about bad OGs. It's they're just OGs. Now I guess he's talking about the ones who are actually telling the young people to commit the violence. Who are leading the who are leading the you to yeah. the slaughtered. Well, yeah. I guess he's not talking about the reformed OGs, which is what Hassan Kemmel would be, a reformed OG. He's talking about the OGs who's still in the hood telling them, yeah, yeah. Go rep this set. Go kill that person. Da, da, da. Don't let them talk to you that way. Who's teaching them these emotions? Basically, you got the OGs teaching the young, the youth emotions, and bad pussy ass rappers. And I'm saying the things that you're saying, and the glorification of going to prison. You started speaking about men. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold on. Hold on. You let got, me no, but you got you got you my message. Argue your opinion. You cannot argue an opinion. This is my opinion. And then when you I took what I had to say the wrong way. Okay. It can't be the wrong way if it's an opinion. We got to get people to understand what an opinion means. This is not based in fact. This is my opinion based on what I heard you say. So let me get it out. My opinion. And I took it this way. So therefore other people can take it this way. You talked about gangsters. And you said it in a way that made it look like you was glorifying being in jail, being around other dudes that was in jail and got busy because you said there was no names behind me. So what does that tell young youth that they need to be? Don't be the guy who went to the NBA and, and became a basketball player because that's success. Rather, I scored 6.1 point. My mama was on a golf course. Don't be the guy that put your mama on the golf course. Be the guy that go to prison and have your mama send him some money. Damn. Is that what you're telling the youth? Hell no, that's not what the that's how you that's how you took what I said. But so that's how did not you what mean I was it? saying. Okay, go ahead. That's absolutely not what I was saying. 
You got the what I was saying. All right. So what I was saying, just to make you, just to make it clear, right? What I was saying is, when I say don't compare me, like for example, also I also mentioned Styles P, right? And what what Styles what Styles P was saying was how civilians are not snitches. So everybody. By the way, let's talk about. I got to jump in right quick. Snitching. People have completely warped what that word means. A snitch is a person who commits a crime with another person and then snitches on the person that committed the crime with. That is a snitch. If someone kills your cousin, your family member, and you snitch, that's not, that you say something, I'm sorry, that is not snitching. Snitching is telling on somebody who did something with you so you can get lower time. Please comment in the comment section. Tell us what your beliefs of snitching is. Because <laughs> it's going to be some uh <laughs> it's not you're not a snitch if somebody kills you don't know this dude he kills somebody you know you love and you tell like look I, I saw this dude in this type of car yeah go get that dude if the new yorkers come in a section you a fucking rat that's not a snitch <laughs> a snitch is somebody who commits a crime with someone and tells on that person so that they can get less time that's a snitch the one in the red is a rat <laughs> it was in my dm sending me that and my whole thing is i've been saying this for like four years on youtube why does it take for a rapper to say the same thing that I'm saying? Just like a lot of the things that you're absolutely yeah, that you, that you're saying is the same thing that I'm saying. So when I'm saying don't compare me to somebody in the NBA, it's no disrespect to you. It's just basically saying that your struggle and my struggle was totally different. I'm not glorifying the prison life. I'm just saying I had to go through the hellfire. At 18 years old, you was rich. I wish I wish that I could have sent my mother off and bought my mother a house instead. At 18 years old, I was in jail for murder, and my mother had to move out of Bronx River to Far Rockaway to get to, to get away from the crime scenes. So I'm not sitting up there saying that I'm glorifying that. I'm just saying that the path that you took, which was a good path, and the path that I took was a different path. So when people be it's a bad path, you mean? He didn't say bad path. He said a different path. Comparing. Like my options and your options was totally different. It's what I, mean, I was trying how, to say. How can, you, how can you say that? You can't come to that conclusion. There's no options. It's decision making and behavior. My behavior was different than yours. So I got different outcomes. You got to start telling kids the truth that if you glorify street life, you get a big homie and you look up to men and worship men that rock nigga snot box and you can go to prison. And if you look up to basketball players, you can go to the NBA. And put your mother on a goddamn golf course. Now that part I disagree with Kwame. You shouldn't look up to no damn basketball player either. I get his point. I guess motivated by is the word he wanted to say. Yeah, I don't think he meant. I don't think he meant actually to. look up to idolize. He didn't motivate. You motivate, see, be a mentor. The, so you look at Kwame. He grew up in the situation he grew up in, but he was able to to get around that situation, to get through that maze, that landmine, that landfill, that landmine field. I'm sorry. And he was able to get success. So I guess he mean motivation. So I'll I'll take that. I retract that. So to say it in the way that you said it made it seem like you were better than someone who went to the NBA because Hell you were no. But I'm just saying, you, and this is the thing, no one can ever be right with you because you also say on one end, there's no celebrities talking this real. There's no celebrities saying what I'm saying. And then when one say what you're saying, you get mad because you've been saying it. So which one is it? Do you want celebrities? To talk like you're talking or do you because that's what you want, right? You said celebrities need to stand up for the community and be real. So once they do that, you have an out. You double talking because then you can say, well, that celebrity ain't connected to us and he ain't real. He ain't been to jail and all this other bullshit because you really want to shine for everything. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> but, I, you know, I, I say the same thing as uh, Hassan, but not exactly. I know that when celebrities talk, they bring bigger attention to it because of their status. Yeah. But sometimes because of their status, to me, it just feels like it can get injected with some bullshit. Exactly. Yeah. It, it can be, you can, they can, they because they have their, the, the size of their audience, they can take a movement and bastardize it. And yeah. Just make it useless and just yeah. turn it into a, go a totally different direction than, than you what wanted you wanted to go. to go. Yeah. So I get that point. Yeah. But that's pretty much all we need to show from this. Yeah. <laughs> Kwame Brown, Kwame Brown, Kwame, sorry, What's Kwame, Kwame, <laughs> Kwame Brown, and Assign Campbell, the 
the mindset of an elder versus the mindset of an OG. Too many el- I mean, too many OGs, not enough, enough elders. elders in our communities. And I, this, this is not the whole video. This is only an oh, hour. Hell. We can't go to the whole. It's three hours long. They went back and forth. But you know, I think they ended up going, getting into a little argument. Somebody said they threatened to fight somebody. I don't know. We're not talking. We don't care about none of that. That's them. That's, that's, that's for business. another channel to post that. Yeah, that's there. We just want to talk about <laughs> the, the dichotomy between the two mindsets. Of the OG and the elder, what but at say? least they came on. He came on and, there, and he came on there, and they talked. Face well, it clearly face. didn't work out because they still caught him in another video about it, saying, "You know, you said I stole your style." Listen to me. So now I'm really doing it. If Kwame would have put on those prosthetic, <laughs> oh my arms, he, I would have been on the damn flow. If Kwame Brown, Kwame Brown, would have put on prosthetic arms, Hassan would have been finished. It would have been over. <laughs> It, shit would have been done. What are we talking about? He had the mannerisms down and everything. And everything. How you take the pictures and shit. <laughs> but anyway, that's just funny. Kwame, Kwame being funny like he is. But anyway, man, uh, hopefully you watch the video. Hopefully you hopefully you agree. If you don't, comment below and tell us your thoughts on it. Especially about that snitching shit. <laughs> I, that's I what a, a snitch is. That's, that's what a snitch is. I didn't give you my definition of what a snitch is. But what's a snitch? <laughs> Dope. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, thanks for viewing the video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure to go subscribe and Oh, shit, he got more subscribers than us. We probably don't even need to say this. Go subscribe <laughs> to Kwame and Hassan. Even go subscribe to their page. I'm gonna make sure I post a link in the description to, and it's a uh, link to the entire podcast so that you can go watch it yes, on sir. there and you yeah, don't so complain you, in the conversation. So you don't come saying, to a, a, another shut the fuck channel, up. another channel to watch somebody else's video. How and about tell shut the fuck up? Bit? Yeah, telling me to shut the fuck up. Shut the hold on. Let me get into this for a second. <laughs> How you gonna come to a page reacting to something? Tell them you want to watch the video without them talking. Well, you can just go to the damn go to channel, the channel they got it on the channel. All right, man. But anyway, we've been dealing with that, but that's okay. But anyway, man, uh, y'all be good. Be safe. All praise to the most high and peace.